Thank you so much for joining us on CGT and Dr. Lee. So first of all, China has introduced Jinsao technology to more than 100 countries and regions, making it a key Chinese brand for foreign aid programs. So why was Jinsao technology chosen to play such an important role? Uh, thank you for the question. In Chinese, Jin means mushrooms or fungi, and the Cao means grass or hoopsus plants. So initially, Jin Cao technology used the grass to replace wood as substrate to grow mushrooms. The Jin Cao grass is a new type of biological materials and agricultural resources because we can use it to replace wood for the production of fiber, to produce fiberboard, paper, and uh, produce bioenergy as well. Compare mushroom cultivation with farmers' traditional agricultural practice. Farmers now can diversify their income streams and they reduce the dependency on the traditional crops, which are more vulnerable to the climate change conditions. Jinsao grass also serves as a high protein forage for livestock. This provides farmers with a cost effective and sustainable feed source. The high quality fodder enhances the livestock health and the productivity, leading to the better yield of milk, meat, or other animal products. Through so China aid and international cooperation programs, the Jinsa technology has spread to over 100 countries now. Well, it is a powerful tool, as you mentioned, and China first introduced this technology to Pacific Island countries over two decades ago. So how has this played out? In 2014, the Fiji Jinsao Technology Demonstration Center, supported by Chinese government, a program initiated. And in 2018, China and the PNG signed the Jinsao and Urban Rights Technology Cooperation Agreement. So assistance brought by China to PNG is aimed at sharing the seedlings, the Jinsao grass seedlings, um, and the, the technology, our industry experience, and also for talent development which can fundamentally solve the local issues of poverty and the job uh, for job opportunities. This green technology has helped lift tens of thousands of locals out of poverty in PNG and also been listed as a pilot industry for economic development in the Eastern Highland provinces. In 2023, we established the China South Pacific Island Regional Demonstration Center on Jinsao Technology in Fiji. This program effectively elevated the problem of feed shortage during the dry season for the island countries so as to promote the development of animal husbandry. And it, um, Jinsao Technology also listed by the Fiji Ministry of Agriculture as the top initiative to improve livestock productivity. Dr. Lin, so what do you think were the main challenges in introducing this technology to local farmers in the Pacific Island countries at the very beginning, and how is it perceived now? The local farmers, uh, especially those uh, villagers, they have never know about how to grow mushroom, and they even haven't get a chance to eat mushroom before. So how can they understand without any be education background? How can they understand such a modern, uh, such a modern biological practice to solve this problem? And we have to simplify our technology and adapt to the local conditions. We use um, mostly the local available resources to lower the cost. And our expert team has stayed, we stayed, our expert team stayed with the villagers in the, in the countryside and they teach the farmers every day face to face and hand in hand. What tangible results have been achieved in the region following the application of the technology? So Jinsao project played a very important role for guiding the, the local sustainable development of agriculture for rural areas in Papua New Guinea, in Fiji. So we taking Eastern Highland province as example. It's the first province we entered to um, promote the Jinsao technology. Our team has uh, trained more than about 3,000 local farmers and uh, over half of them are female. So we also extend this technology to more than 17 districts in nine provinces of Papua New Guinea, benefit more than 45,000 people. In addition to its role in poverty reduction, what are the social benefits here? So other than the poverty uh, reduction, the Jinsa technology can bring to social impacts, positive, can bring 
positive social impacts so, uh, such as create job opportunities uh, to uh, serve the gender equity. Half of our beneficiaries, they are women. Majority of our beneficiaries, they are youth. Uh, the many youth, they graduate from the school, they can't find a job, but they get come to our Jinsa industry for martial production, for the marketing, sales, and uh, uh, even some, uh, like, they also have their own uh, this, uh, business programs integrated with our uh, martial, uh, this uh, Jinsa industry. So in this way, they get their self-employment and also they have uh, uh, served the, the local community as, as well.